So now I want to consider a body that is rotating, same rigid body that rotates about a fixed axis. So we're going to build this up step by step. And I have some crazy object, and it has some mass out here. So I want to consider the influence or the contribution to the kinetic energy of the entire body that comes about from the little bit of mass m sub i. And then I'm going to sum that contribution over all the masses. When I said I, I was just kidding. You are going to do this. So figure out what the kinetic energy is by summing up 1 half, whoops, sum over I, 1 half m sub I, v sub I squared. You should be able to express the speed with which any little mass point is moving using r sub i and omega. And that should allow you to express the kinetic energy of the whole. So did, did we agree that omega was the same for every little bit? Of mass, oh, you, you want more chocolate, that's why. <laughs> One sec. <laughs> Whoops, yes. So R sub i is the distance from the axis of rotation to that little bit of mass. And this little bit of mass is rotating around the fixed axis in a circle of radius r, and it has angular velocity omega. So therefore, it is moving at speed r sub i times omega. Are we together? So now let's factor out the stuff that doesn't change while we do the sum. Just put that at the front. 1 half comes out, uh, omega squared comes out, and then I'm left with the sum over i of m sub i, r sub i squared, which should give you a feeling of déjà vu. What is this? That's the moment of inertia. So the kinetic energy of all these little bits of mass that are rotating around Now, unlike momentum versus angular momentum, they're not the same beast at all. They don't have the same dimensions. This is just we built up kinetic energy the same way we always build up kinetic energy. This is not any kind of special green or ugly kinetic energy. It's just the same. And just as before, we had an expression, if you recall, And sometimes, whoops, I don't know why that M morphed. <clears throat> That's better. Sometimes it was more convenient to use P squared over 2M, particularly in a problem where momentum was conserved. So we might as well develop the rotational analog. So I will get I times omega is what? That's the angular momentum L. I need two powers of that to get the two omegas, but then I get one extra factor of the moment of inertia, so I have to divide that out. So it's the same thing. And in a problem where angular momentum is conserved, that might be a more convenient way to express the kinetic energy. OK? So. What have we? Ah, there it was. And there's the answer. 
with sparkles. Okay, so let's consider an example. Uh, this is a laboratory ultra centrifuge. The rotor, which is shown at the right, holds a bunch of tubes and will spin around at speeds up to 55,000 revolutions per minute, which seems high to me, awfully fast. Uh, the whole rotor weighs about 20 pounds and has a radius of about 24 centimeters, so from here to there about 24 centimeters. So, oh yeah, treat that rotor as a disk and estimate its kinetic energy. I give you three minutes. Uh, 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 